Hermanos de Telegit, nos encontramos en un especial de lujo. Una banda legendaria se encuentra de visita y tenemos la oportunidad de platicar con su líder máximo. Estoy hablando de los Smashing Pumpkins y tenemos la oportunidad de platicar con Billy Corgan. First of all, it's an honor, Billy. Thank you very much for your time in this interview. Thank you. And congratulations for Oceania. I think it's an amazing, an amazing album. Oh, thank you. What, how can you express uh, and describe the creating process for this record? Well, we went to uh, Sedona, Arizona. Uh, and rented an empty movie theater, worked together for a while as a band, and just kind of found the musical themes. And then I kind of went back and wrote a bunch of the songs on my own. And then we just went in the studio and started recording. Some of the songs are actually from the studio. Uh, we had songs that we had from Sedona. I thought, eh, I would throw them out and just write a new song that day. So I think there's two, maybe two songs down that were just written in one day and recorded like that, boom. So it was more of a kind of a flowing, let's just try to feel good energy. And if it doesn't, If it's not working, let's just get rid of it. And that seemed to be r really good. Now, for this recording session, you work as a band with all the members. Mm. And, and other times, you, you used to play all the instruments. How, how much change the way of recording as a band? Well, the, the way it used to be in the, in the band before, it wasn't as simple as I would do everything. We did work together, and we were together lots of the times. As it went on through the years... Then it became more and more like they just wouldn't come in because they didn't want to sit there um, or even be a part of the decision making. Um, so it's not like it's totally different. It's very much like the early days of the pumpkins where we're just all together and we're, we're, we're saying, you know, I think it would be better if it was more like this. And somebody else says, well, I think it's better if you do you remember that other one. And it's more talking and kind of working out the problems as a group. So. Um, it's more of a group mind is probably a better way to describe it. Now, what is going to happen with the Tear Garden by Kaleidoscope project? Are you going to put it on hold? You don't know? No, I, I think Oceania is very much a part of Tear Garden. And I have plenty of demos that I've done from 2009. So if I wanted to just get rid of Tear Garden, I would just put out the demos and say, okay, leave me alone about this. No, I actually see Tear Garden as like, in a way, the last traditional Smashing Pumpkins project as having a beginning and middle and end. I didn't just want to do an album. I wasn't sure that releasing one song at a time was a good idea. So it's more of like a work in progress. And I'm hopeful that when Tear Garden is done, whether it's 44 songs or 60 or 42 songs, that when you put it all together in a fan's hand, they go, okay, now I understand what he was trying to do. Where maybe if you just listen to Oceania, it doesn't make sense. And if you just listen to the first songs, it doesn't make sense. I want you to kind of see this journey from point A to point B to point C. Um, I thought that would be interesting. And so whether or not that can be pulled off in the end, we'll see. Cool. Now, talking uh, about, about these shows, I know that it's really important also the visual aspect. Tell us a little bit who came with the idea. How can you describe that trip? Um, well, we have a 25-foot orb that's suspended above the stage. It looks pretty incredible just on its own. And then we use seven projectors to project images that were created by Sean Evans and a team that he uh, put together. Uh, and Sean had worked with Roger Waters on the wall, and I'd seen these incredible projections because the, the new technologies that are available uh, as far as what you can do with projections or uh, LED screens, all this stuff. So, um, yeah, it's just like almost like this crazy visual narrative that kind of goes with what we're playing. Sometimes it's like a dream. Sometimes it's literal. And that goes with the album. And then the second half, we go into much more of a traditional rock show. And then you can really feel like the energy kind of kick up as the show gets darker and wilder. So it's been a really uh, thrilling show to play, completely exhausting. And by the time it's over, it's like, wow, I can't believe we just did that. I think tonight we have planned something like 28 songs, which is four more than we were playing in Australia and Asia. So it's, uh, it's going to be quite a night. Now, I know that you also are start writing your autobiography. Uh, tell us a little bit the experience and how much are you going to open up for this uh, book? Um, Well, one interesting thing about my book is that everybody is under a code name. Uh, so there will be some people, of course, uh, you know, I'm sure if you do your math, you'll be able to figure out. But most of the people that have been important in my life are people that are not public people. Um, and I did this so that I could really open up into the thought processes behind all the major periods of my life. Um, for everything that people think they know about me, let's say from 1993, they only know about 10%. There's so much stuff that nobody knows, and so I'm pretty much throwing it wide open. And there's lots of crazy stuff um, that went on that 
has never been discussed publicly because I would kind of put a wall up at a certain point. And so as, as open as I seem to be, I really haven't been that open. So I think a lot of people will be very shocked. There's everything from uh, the supernatural to, um, I mean, you got witches in there. You got all sorts of stuff. So uh, Carlos Castaneda would be proud. Oh, so, so you like the books of Carlos Castaneda? I actually, in my teen years, I read every uh, Castaneda's book, cover to cover. So, uh, uh, yeah, Carlos Castaneda's a major influence on my spiritual thinking. Cool. Now, a, a lot of people want to know if you're still in touch in a certain way with the original members of the Smashing Pumpkins. No. Um, well, that's not totally true. Uh, our friend, our mutual friend, a friend to all the Smashing Pumpkins, Dennis Fleming from the Frogs, recently passed away. Uh, at age 57, I believe. And, uh, and so I saw Jimmy Chamberlain at the funeral, and, and we're fine. There's no, uh, you know, we weren't, we had a very nice conversation and talked. And, uh, and he even said nice things about Oceani, which was very, very kind of him. But, um, no, we don't really have a relationship anymore. Um, and as far as the other members know, none at all. Um, there's been lawsuits and things that, that they've done that have just really ruined their, any kind of relationship. So, no, it's just, it's all in the past. It's, it's sort of like, it's sort of like having an ex-girlfriend, yeah. you know, you still love them in a certain way, but deep down you think, I don't want to deal with that. You live your life, I'll live mine. So the beautiful thing is what we did together. It's there. There's so many videos and albums and B-sides. Um, so if people really like the old band, um, and we, you know, we've been reissuing the old albums with extra tracks, things like that. I, I, I'm all for it. Like, I want people to celebrate that band. It was a great band when it was a great band. Um, and so, and I'm proud that I'm able to continue the tradition of that band. Cool. Now, talking about another thing, you also get involved in, in a wrestling promotion. Tell us a little bit how is, how is the way of, of that? Um, I've started a wrestling promotion in Chicago called Resistance Pro with two brothers, Jacques and Gabe Barron. And um, we're an independent wrestling promotion. We're more based on, let's say, uh, 1960s and 1970s AWA. Okay. So if anybody knows that kind of old school style. Yeah. So we're trying to bring the old school style into the future. So, um, but we have like, uh, we just had on our last card, uh, Samurai Del Sol who uh, is actually, I think, in Mexico right now wrestling, uh, I believe, for, uh, well, either he's obviously wrestling for either CML, uh, CMLL or at AAA. Um, I think he's wrestling for AAA. So we have luchadors, we have everybody, but it's more that 60s, 70s style. Uh, we like to work a little safer in the ring style and a little bit more storyline style. Okay, okay, that's, that's great. Unlike, that unlike the luchas, we have rules. <laughs> yeah, I know. We have some rules in Resistance Pro. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Now, uh, t talking about, about uh, this, this album and the single, the new single, uh, Panopticon, tell us a little bit the, the story behind that song. Uh, so the song Panopticon? Yeah. Um, well, it was one of those riffs we kind of had laying around. The da -da 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 -da. We had this beginning riff that we really liked, but we never knew what to do with it. Uh, until I really sat down and wrote the song on the piano, it didn't really turn into a real song. As far as the subject matter, um, it sort of refers to the, the state it, I feel in America where I feel like everything we're doing now is being watched. And every week now, new information comes out about new types of spying, new types of surveillance. And I can't, I mean, you know, when we were kids in school, we read 1984. And obviously the reason we read Orwell's 1984 was to say, this will never happen in America. See, America's not like this. And now we are liber literally living in a culture that not only has become 1984, but actually the people in America support <laughs> 1984 as a way of life. Most people will say, well, I don't have anything to be afraid of. Uh, they can spy on me, uh, you know, I'm a good American. This is completely counterintuitive to what America was founded on, which is that everybody has an individual right. You do your thing, and unless you're breaking the law, we're going to leave you alone. Freedom of choice and freedom of, like... Every, every week now, there's stories in America about um, uh, a man was arrested not too long ago uh, for, dr for storing his own rainwater on his property. He's collecting water off his roof. He got in trouble for that. Uh, a, a lady was recently fined for having a birthday party on her farm. Uh, you know, every week we hear these stories. These are not like little isolated incidents. This is a changing consciousness in America where America's turned into some sort of literally big brother thing. And it's shocking that 
um, everybody seems to be okay with it. Um, yeah, crazy. Totally agree. Now, so we wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to no. wrestle. <laughs> Our wrestlers are going to take on. <laughs> now, uh, talking about a great, great artist that did a collaboration in one of your albums, The Future Embrace, for uh, the cover of, of VG's To Love Somebody, Robert Smith. Tell us the experience of working with such a magical character. Well, the great thing about Robert Smith as an artist is he is like that all the time. He never stops being the Robert Smith that you see on stage or in the videos. He is Robert Smith all the time. And so um, he's probably one of the most fascinating people I've ever met. Highly intelligent, certainly a musical hero of mine. Uh, very funny, uh, very irreverent. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, he, there's only one Robert Smith, and, and, and I'm proud that I know him as a person. Uh, and he's one of those artists where over time, he will get his complete musical respect because he's been so influential. And he's really, there's almost no artist like him. Cool. Now, uh, the last question, I was reading that you already start like thinking about what is going to be the next mm -hmm. studio album and that probably is going to be a cruel one. <laughs> can, can, can you explain it a little bit why? <laughs> yeah, I joked that I said the new Smashing Pumpkins album was going to be cruel, thinking that everyone would know I was joking. And of course, um, this being a world without humor, um, no one got the joke. No, I was. <laughs> oh, it's no, no, it's okay. No, it's okay. Uh, the enemy got fooled too. Uh, so that being said, no. Uh, um, I, what I'm really sort of hinting at is, I think the next album will be probably more rock and roll. Um, Ocean is a very beautiful album. Of course, there are heavy moments, but it's more dreamy and 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 more takes you on a journey. I think the new album will be a little bit more up uh, in that style. I like the idea of it being a more. Cool Me too. One. I'm ready. I'm, re <laughs> I'm ready. We, we we've been we've been sharpening our sharpening our guitars. That we're ready to go. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank Better you for the time of this Thank interview. You. Congratulations. This album. It's an amazing, an amazing album. And all the respect for your whole career. Ya lo vieron, hermanos. Billy Corgan, grande entre los grandes de Smashing Pumpkins. Continuamos con Mano Le Cami. Estamos aquí en Telehit.